Thank you, Mr. President. I, I don't want to be left out. Everybody else is talking. I want to talk to you. I, I, I kind of wish Senator Lurie was, was in here. I, I'd like to have this debate about, about Medicaid. Uh, um, no, I mean, that, that's all right. I mean, I, I want to have that debate, quite honestly. I would like for us to have that policy debate because, to me, it's not about who the president is. To me, it is about policy. And I will tell everybody very clearly that I think it's terrible policy to, for government to give free stuff to able-bodied adults. And we can have that discussion all we want, but for me, that is the overriding policy, and I'm happy to, I'm happy to talk about that any time. But I do want to talk a little bit about this infrastructure thing, and I'm glad we're at, Heck, we've had more discussion today about roads than we've had in a year. Um, and I appreciate that because I'll tell you, today, today is the end of the fourth week. The senator from Fairfield just told us that he was looking in his magazine or newspaper and he was talking about it was the top issue of 2016. I think everybody coming in this year said it was the top issue of 2016. The Press Association had their annual event right before session started, the week before. That was the issue that dominated. This is the end of the fourth week. We ain't talked about it. Senator from Cherokee, you're absolutely right. We ought to be talking about it. I don't care what y'all do in committees. It's not going to matter until you get to the floor. All right. I have, I, I have come to believe that is absolutely the case. It doesn't matter what happens in finance committee. It doesn't matter what happens in transportation. Because it's all going to be rehashed completely here on the floor. Senator from Cherokee mentioned something about the secret committee, which... I think was being completely overblown because it wasn't a committee really. All it was, and I know there was a lot of concern in here about what was going on. I had a lot of questions in here and definitely a lot of questions from, from outside. Honestly, it was just a brainstorming session among six or eight of us. We were just bouncing ideas around. There's no consensus in that, com in that group to do anything. There was no consensus at all. There definitely was no consensus proposal. I can guarantee you there wasn't a compromise proposal that came out of there. But I'll also tell you that I don't think that committee was ever designed to come up with a compromise. Because if, that, if you really want to have a compromise, you've got to have people, the right players in the room. And that group did not have the right players in the room for a compromise. So there was never any type of compromise contemplated from my perspective with that group. But Senator from Lexington, you asked earlier, and Senator from Kershaw talked about these hurdles, and you talked about the hurdles. And I'm to the point, honestly, where I'd say, let's just pull down all the amendments and let's have a vote on the finance plan. Let's just do it. I mean, I've heard over and over how the votes are there to do it, then it, do it. If you got the votes, pass the darn thing. You don't have the votes, that's why you won't do it. But if you got the votes, just do it. And in fact, I'd be willing to, to, to pull everything down and just let you have the vote because I'm tired of hearing about it. But, Senator, you asked how many of us in here have been hearing from our constituents that we need to reform DOT. I've heard from hundreds, hundreds. How many of us have heard from constituents who say we need tax relief? Anytime I talk with somebody who's read in the newspaper or heard about a $1.2, $1 $1.3 billion surplus, every daggum one of them say, why in the world are you taking that much from me in taxes when you got a surplus like that every year? Every daggum one of them. Now, we can talk about it being more difficult. You and I were on a panel earlier this year. I agree that it's more difficult if you've got three hurdles. I think it's impossible if you don't have those hurdles. Um, so, I mean, it, but we can have these conversations in committee all we want. But whatever y'all come up with in committee, we're going to rehash it here. I mean, I'm here and now, and I actually like your idea. I, I, I agree with Senator from Cherokee. I, I really enjoyed what you had to say. I agree with much of what you had to say. I, I like your questions that you asked. I like the idea of bringing in DOT and SIB and having these conversations. But, y'all, I got to tell you, I'm flat out baffled how last year we were on a racetrack to pass an $800 million tax increase, and people didn't know what DOT does. I mean, the... The Finance Committee twice, twice passed an $800 million tax increase out of committee that twice failed for special order in this body. And what we're hearing is that we don't even know what DOT does. We don't know what the CIP does, but we were going to pass that, that tax increase. That is insane. I'm all for, I'm all for having, having these conversations. 
to, so I can, I can listen more about it. I'm wondering why that's got to happen the fifth week of the legislative session. It's, the, it's 2016's a top issue. We're going to have those, those issues the fifth week. And I'm wondering why are we taking a break the week after Easter? Why didn't we take a break last week? Y'all wasting my time. And I'm ticked off about it. I would rather you waste my money. Now, I know we're going to get to that later on in the session. But I would rather you waste my money than waste my time. All right, we can take off. We can take off next week. We're not going to do anything other than coming up for a committee hearing. I mean, that's what we've just heard. We're not going to do anything on the floor. I mean, the only the only productive thing that this Senate has done this entire year, I'm starting to believe the House is hype. Okay, because the only productive thing that we have done all year happened yesterday, and it happened in the House chamber. Senator from Richmond, what purpose do you rise, sir? Well, Senator, you for a couple. Senator, of you for a couple of questions. Yes, sir, I will. Senator, you alluded to the $800 million proposed tax increase that we discussed last year. Are you aware that's the largest general tax increase in the history of South Carolina? That proposal Absolutely. was the largest tax increase the state has looked at in the history of South Carolina. Absolutely. In history. Right. Are you aware also, Senator, I think you may have mentioned this too, that when last year, this current fiscal year, was something like a $1.2 billion surplus. Yes, sir. So we're, some of the, some of, some of us are advocating the largest tax increase in the history of the state. At the same time, we have the largest surplus in the history of the state. Well, now, now you're not finished there, because I heard a few minutes ago, we're going to have to bond a bunch of money, too. We've got the largest surplus in the history of the state. We're talking about the largest tax increase in the history of the state. Plus, we've got to borrow money, y'all. So, Tell me how that sells out there. This is insanity. Let me go back to the reality of this and what we're facing did the governor of South Carolina last year in the state of the state address, and this year in the state of the state address, outlined, as something Cherokee mentioned, the three components would have to be in any infrastructure change in the power of the state. Primarily the reform of DOT, revenue reduction, as something Florence mentioned, and also uh, perhaps a revenue increase. Didn't she not outline that, unless all three components were a part of this, that she was going to veto it? She Didn't she specifically say that she was going to veto it without those components. She did, and I will add to that that it really it wasn't just the governor. You had a significant majority of, I will tell you, the minority said that that was an essential component too. I mean, that there were lots of us who said that it's going to have to have all three components because I don't think you fix the roads just by dumping in a bunch more money. You've got to have significant reform at that agency in order to really fix the roads to, to get to those issues. You're not because, I mean, you know, I've heard the Senator from Cherokee express frustration. We gave them, what, about $300 million last year to CTCs, and they ain't filled a pothole yet. Senator, you're aware, and you may have been in shame when I mentioned this earlier, that six years ago we appropriated on a state basis, including federal funds, $1.1 billion for, for highway infrastructure. Now. I remember that. You, are you aware that it's almost double now? People are talking about putting additional revenue in the roads. We've almost doubled the amount of money that we're putting in the roads and bridges in the state. Are you aware of that? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know that I agree that that's actually the case. But I'll show you the figures. I mean, later. Th that's right, and I'm happy, to, I'm happy to look at the figures. I mean, I've, seen, I mean, I've, heard, the, I've heard the talk before that, that the, the DOT budget has been doubled, and, and, and I, I don't know that that's really accurate. When you look at it, especially over the long run and you consider inflation, I'll tell you that they've actually been, from, my, from what I've looked at, not just the surface of it, you actually look into it, I think they've actually had annual growth of around 1%, maybe even a little bit less. Um, so I, I, I don't know that I actually believe that's accurate, but, but I understand, I, I think that's something that everybody, everybody else needs to understand. I mean, I think that's a conversation we need to have because it's very difficult to tell people on the outside that, hey, you need to pay more when it looks like or when other people have been telling